Okay. Okay. So we're going to talk a little bit about least common multiples, but I'm not going to give you homework from. Yeah, maybe I will. Maybe we'll do the extra worksheets tomorrow. That might make the most sense. So there's the greatest common factor, which is what we did last week, and then the least common multiples, which we're going to do today. So just like when we talk about the greatest common factor, we call it the GCF, and the least common multiple, we'll call the L LCM. It's just nice to have a short, short abbreviation. By the way, it's surely not November 28th. Say that, right, it's the smallest number. So the least common multiple. Well, let's first think about what multiples are. If I look at um, the greatest common factor, what's the greatest common factor of 8 and 12 can? Four. It's the biggest number. That's why we say greatest. The biggest number that goes into 8 and 12. So we could look at the, the list method. All the factors of 8 are 1, 1 times 8, 2 times 4. Those are all the factors of 8, right? 1, 2, 4, and 8. And the factors of 12 are 1 times 12, 2 times what? 6, and 3 times <laughs> Four, right? And so when you look at the common factors, you know, one's four. common, two's common, and four's common. So that's the biggest of the common. So the greatest common factor of eight and twelve is four. Okay? But if you do the latter, you can find that answer too. And the latter today becomes really helpful. Uh, just Sasha and then Kanan. Um, no, so we'll we'll talk about that. Kanan? Isn't the Yes. And and I actually have the answer here, but I'm gonna show you why. But I won't I'll also let you practice where I don't have the answer. Well let's figure out the greatest common factor one more way. Let's practice the ladder because because today that ladder could be really helpful. So if this is eight and this is 12, something common to both say is 2. You could say 4, 2, but I'm going to start with 2. 8 divided by 2 is 4, and 12 divided by 2 is 6. And then what's common to both 4 and 6? 2, two right? So 4 divided by 2 is 2, and 6 divided by 2 is 3. Okay, so we remember, hopefully from last week, Michaela, what do you do with these two to find the greatest common factor? You times them, right? So from last week, we know the greatest common factor is 2 times 2, which is 4. Okay? So you could get it with the ladder or the list. You can do it with factor trees, but I'm going to stay away from the factor trees because I know some of you guys really like those, but it's harder when the numbers get big. It's just harder. So the least common multiple is different because the word factor, factors are smaller. Like if you look at eight, they're either eight or smaller. They have to be smaller than the number or the number itself. The factors at 12 are 12 or smaller. Multiples, think about it when you do multiples. It's like when you learn how to count by fives. Count by fives for you. You have five, then what? 10, 15, 20, 25. Those are the multiples. Right. Right. Those are the multiples of five. So if I look at the multiples of eight, now I'm looking at multiples. Eight, 16. What's the next multiple of eight? 24. Say we do five. What's the next multiple? 32. And then 40. So multiples, where you get 8 from, that's really 8 times 1, and then 8 times 2. That's where I'm getting the multiples. 8 times 3, 8 times 4, and 8 times 5. That's what I mean by multiples. It's how do you get 8? Well, that's 8 times 1. How do you get 16? That's 8 times 2. 
How do you get 24? That's 8 times 3. How do you get 32? That's 8 times 4. So multiples are when you use multiplication with all of the counting numbers. Okay, so with that idea, Sasha, can you tell me the multiples of 12? After 12, 12 times 1 is 1 of the multiples. So what's the next multiple? Well, it'd be 12 times 2 would give me the next multiple. But what, what is the next multiple? What's 12 times 2? Okay, and, and do the next one, Sasha. What's 12 times 3? Okay, so you get the idea. And um, somebody else, 12 times 4. Um, that's that's uh, 48, forty, right? And then 12 times 5, Canaan? 60. Okay, and there's a lot of multiples. They go on forever, right? But the word least... And the word common means we want the smallest multiple that's in both. So, Claire, when you look at the multiples of 8 right here and the multiples of 12, what's the smallest multiple that's in both? <coughs> 24. You see that? Because it's the first one in the list. When you look low to high, that's in both. So here's something that's really handy, Kyle. What about zero? Yeah. Both have zero and eight have zero. We don't count zero. You're so funny. Okay. Good question. All right. That means I can't just write zero. Zero. Yeah, you can't write zero every time. Okay, but here's something. This ladder, if I take a little. I'm going to take this ladder here, um, group it, clone it. Let's move this over here. Guess what? In this ladder, you can use this ladder to get the least common multiple. So, Mark, you're going to help me here. Okay. Okay. So, what did I just say? Wait, what? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know what you just said. Why, why, why is that? If you're facing the board. Uh, <laughs> and what else? Why else, maybe? Because I was talking. Yes, because you were talking. I'll own facing the board, but you have to own talking. Okay, so now I'm facing you, and you're not talking. I said that we can use the ladder, the exact same ladder that we did up here to find the least common multiple. That's why the ladder is really nice. So take the bottom number of the ladder on the left, okay, right here, and multiply it by the top number on the right. What do you get? 24. 24. What do you get here? 24. So the ladder always tells you the least common multiple. It is. And that's one way to find it. But you could also find it another way. So the other way is, look at these numbers and these numbers. What letter did, did I just make? L. L, right. So Marcos, take all four of those numbers, 2 times 2 times 2 times 3, and multiply them for me. What do you get first? 4. And then times 2, times 3. Now what do you get? 8. Eight. Times 3. What do you get? 24. And 24 is the least common multiple. So your job today is to work and find least common multiples. So let's do, let me pause this for Okay, so for today, I'm going to talk about the directions that you see in the book. One is to find the GCF and the L I mean to find the LCM using listing all the multiples. And then they ask you to do this method in the book, and I'm going to change the directions on that. We're going to skip that method.
So when I give the homework, I'm going to have you change the directions. I just want you to think about that. I'm going to have you do the ladder. Every time it says to do the factor tree, I'm going to have you do the ladder. Okay. Um, right now, I asked you to do the ladder tonight. And then if you want to try the factor tree tomorrow, you can. But I'd rather focus on two methods. Okay, Michaela. So, like, tonight, if you just want to do, like, one problem with that tree and then nothing else. You, you, could, can, you could try it once. And then see if the day after you get it wrong, then you decide. Okay. That's okay. Right. But I'm going to tell you guys when the numbers get bigger, the factor tree, although it works, is usually not very successful for everybody. Okay. So, the third method, if we look at two pages, is to do the division ladder. So... The third method would be what I have here is the division ladder. Okay. So let's just practice the problem. I want you guys to find the least common multiple, find the, find the LCM, and you're going to do it with, um, let's say, 40 and... Thirty-six. Find the least common multiple of forty and thirty-six. That's a beginning one, and then we'll make a harder one. And I want you to use method one, listing all the factors. We're going to not do this method because it both talked about. And method three. So method three would be doing a division ladder with forty and thirty-six, and method one would be listing all the multiples. So try that. No. Okay, so who has an answer? Quinn. 360. That's right. So, so great job. So how did you get that? Did you use, did you do both methods or did you pick one? I just took the division ladder. Okay. So let's do the division ladder. We'll start with that. What did you take out first? Two. Two. And then 40 divided by two is? 20. 20. And 36 divided by 2 is 18. And then 2. 20 divided by 2 is 10. 18 divided by 2 is 9. And that's it, right? Now, now what did you do? Okay, so he used that other little method I, I talked about. The first one is if you take this bottom number... And you multiply it by this top number, that's your least common multiple. Well, I did the, I did the times the mole of the... Okay, that's, there's different ways, right? Or you might ask, well, shoot, I didn't do that, Ms. Carew. I took this number here, and I multiplied it by that number there. Well, what's 4 times 9? 36. So 40 times 9 is still... <coughs> I meant like 36. I did 2 times 2 times 10. Okay, I know. Or, not 36. oops, thank you. And you also got to change the 36 down there. Oh my goodness, help me. There we go. <laughs> How's that? A big 360. Or, you could go that way. And, and then you would get... By that method, you would get 2 times 2 times 10 times 9. So, Claire, this is the one you were asking about, right? 2 times 2 is 4 times 10 times 9. 4 times 10 is 40 times 9, 360. So, no matter how you look at it, oh, my goodness, help me, you guys. Help, help, help. My brain just can't handle it today. <laughs> what would I do without you? Okay, so no matter what you do with the division ladder, there's three ways to get the right answer. I kind of like that. Yeah. I because you know what else it does? If I ask you to find the greatest common factor, you can get that too. So Kyle, what is the greatest common factor? The greatest common factor? Yeah. Four. Yeah, the greatest common factor you get by multiplying these together, right? That is so good. And that's 4. So the greatest common factor is 4. The least common multiple, you could get this way, 
or you could get this way, or you could have gotten it with 10 times 36, right? Three ways. Nine and 40 is harder. So there's lots of ways to get that. Michaela. Um, so I was just having trouble with the other way, the other method, method one. Method one? Yeah, like the list. The yeah, method. we still have to look at method one. I know. That's I've actually picked big numbers to show you that the division ladder is nicer than method one. But let's do multiples of 40. 40 times 1 is 40. What's 40 times 2? 40 times 2 is 20. Times oh, 2. Oh. Times two, yeah, eight, not sixty. No, eighty. Eighty, right? And then another, add another forty, and you get a hundred and. So what's four times three? Do it that way. No, four times three is twelve. So it'd be twelve with the zero. What's four times four? Four times four is twenty. No, not. What's four times four? Look at your chart. So four times 40 would be 160. Yeah. And you'd have to keep going. So, right? That's why I don't like this But group. if you kept going, I'm going to have to go down here. I'd have four times five is 200. Four times six is 240. You could, you could do this. Four times seven is 280. 4 times 8? You just added 40. Right, 320. 4 times 9? 360. And maybe go to 4 times 10? 400. Okay? And then I would go to the 36s. And that's a little harder. 36. 36 plus 36 is 72. Add another 36. And you get 108. So... You would have to keep doing this. Add another 36, and you get 100. If I add another 36 here, you'd get 144. Now I add another 36 here, and you get 180. I mean, do you guys like this method? No. And eventually, I'm going to tell you, you're going to end up getting 360. So this method is not great when the numbers are what? Big. But it's really nice if you have numbers like the first example. Right? When you have 8 and 12, it's fine. Do you get the difference? Yeah. Okay. So we're going to stop there, guys. Yeah. It,